Swiss Air happened on, on the, the 2nd of September, uh, 1998, and, and I was, we're actually, we were actually just going to bed and turn the news on, and they said that there was a plane crash off the coast of, of uh, Nova Scotia, the Peggy's Cove area, and, uh, and uh, turned turn the volume up, and just at that time my phone rang, and it was uh, Lee Fraser, who was my boss, and he was in Fredericton at the time, and he said, uh, said, uh, looks like we got a plane crash off the coast of Nova Scotia and, and we're going to probably have four or five days work. So 22 months later, I was still working on the Swiss Air investigation. So, On the night of the Swiss Air crash, I was in bed at about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. Phone rings and my um, supervisor at the time was Vic Gorman and his question <laughs> was, uh, what are you doing? I said, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> I'm watching, I'm sound asleep. And uh, so he told me there had been a plane crash and we went through the, you know, we need to go in and we're gonna do this. So I'm still thinking in my mind that it's a Cessna or something. I said, how many people are on it? And he said, there's over 200. And I sat straight up in bed and Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, the night Swiss Air went down, I had been in Grand Falls, New Brunswick that day, and I was sleeping in Fredericton, New Brunswick when I got the call at four o'clock in the morning about this accident. I motored back to Halifax and met Neil and Vic, and we worked on getting things set up to what we were anticipating was coming in, and in the initial instance, we thought maybe we'd have bodies but we soon realized that we weren't going to have full corpses. We were going to have portions of human remains. And that's what we dealt with for the next uh, three months. You know, and the thing was, everybody, even to this day, will say, well, you know, how'd you deal with all those bodies coming in? Well, we didn't have bodies. We had pieces. You know, when we talked about, the news would say, well, how many people did you identify today? Well. We say, well, it, we don't know how many people we identify, but we did find X number of kilograms of human remains. So that's, you know, it was different. Back at the time, that was in 1998, so computers weren't like they are now. So I was keeping track of all the samples that were sent, when they were sent, uh, kind of made up a, a bit of a database uh, using uh, spreadsheets. But mostly I was dealing with numbers, exhibit number so-and-so, exhibit number so-and-so. There was one morning I had an issue that something just didn't make, make sense. There was a number that seemed to be wrong or we weren't quite sure, but I had to go check something. So I walk into the cooler that had the body bags. And by this time we probably had three quarters of them identified. I walked down to the end, I found the, the uh, bag, I opened it up and checked it. Okay, everything's good, yeah. I, it wasn't a mistake, We've, we fixed it. I turned around, it was a beautiful day in October, sun, nice breeze, and the bags were there and the tags with the names on them were blowing in the wind. And at that moment, it just hit me. These aren't, these aren't numbers anymore to me. They're names. I walked out. I walked around behind the reefer. I sat down on the ground, and I probably had a good cry for about 10 minutes. We did have some crying sessions during the investigation. I'll be quite honest about you. And, uh, in 2004, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and, and, and have to deal with that every day of my life. But whether it's a plane crash or a simple car accident or an accidental death, it's important for the family. It's important that uh, professionalism, it's important that you get the job and do the, the best job you can. So, yeah, it was important, and it still is important to this day, you know. But our job was in the morgue to identify the people and to bring closure to the families. 
And we turned out, that turned out to be probably the most important and significant thing about the Swiss era was identifying these people so the families could have closure. And we rolled it on our, wore it on our sleeves. And the big thing that we were able to do is the other agencies that came to help. We could not have done this without the military and the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard became in charge on the water. The military giving us the hangar, doing the boats, uh, the helicopters, it was imperative. And we appreciate what they did tremendously. One of the big outcomes of this was we were very proud to say that we identified everyone in about 105 days and be able to bring closures to all these families. I, uh, I've been asked, uh, you know, how did you do it? How, you know, a lot of people with PTSD and I think my mindset through my whole police career has been somebody has to do this for the families. And uh, it, it was satisfying to, to be able to do that.